Secrets of the Paleozoic Era 538 million years ago, ancient life began to flourish on Earth. The Paleozoic Era began to emerge. This era began 538.8 million years ago and lasted as much as 287 million years. The Paleozoic Era was divided by scientists into six periods. Cambrian, Ordovician, Silurian, Devonian, Carboniferous and Permian. Paleontologists around the world are trying to unravel the mysteries of the time. They use the most modern equipment and supercomputers capable of solving problems at space speed. Scientists, like professional detectives, study finds that are several hundred million years old and such work gives interesting results. This is what scientists think the revival of life on our planet looks like. The appearance of the Earth during this period has before continued to change. Mountains rose and fell under the water, the climate changed. Life either developed rapidly or experienced new catastrophes. We present you the most formidable hunters of the Cambrian period. Dinacarids. Some representatives of this species were more than a meter in length. Dinacarids were the most vigilant and fastest creatures of the Cambrian. But with weapons, these creatures clearly went too far. Grasping appendages, despite their formidable appearance, were not as strong as pincers and by themselves could not inflict damage on the victim, but only attracted prey to the mouth, which was located on the belly. Another genus of large tree lobice, Red Lichia. This animal could boast that it had the first jaws. Other inhabitants of the oceans could eat only with the help of suckers. Red Lichia's could gnaw on shells, which means that the hunter's diet became more diverse. Another predator lived the end of the Cambrian period. Sedia. Giant crustacean scorpions, the largest arthropods in history, are descendants of the Sedia. Sedia, thanks to revolutionary weapons, would be dangerous even for a person. Where is Dinacarids and predatory trilobites? despite their intimidating appearance, could not cause harm. After the Cambrian came the Ordovician period. The variety of animals of the time increased many times over. Endoceras were giant cephalopods with a long, straight shell that reached a length of up to four meters. Although there is data on individuals up to eight meters long or more, was one of the largest Ordovician animals. But for all its massive dimensions, Endoceras fed on plankton. The structure of the beak of Endoceras was too primitive to eat even small invertebrates. Camarasaurus, another giant mollusk that lived in the oceans of the Ordovician period. The shell of Camarasaurus reached a length of 9 or 10 meters. Together with the tentacles, this mollusk should have been 11 meters long. This giant monster was also a plankton feeder, like most modern whales and some species of sharks. Graptolithina. These were colonial organisms, which in the early Paleozoic constituted a significant part of the plankton. Ancient organisms appeared in the middle of the Cambrian period, existed in the Ordovician and died out only in the early Carboniferous. The body of Graptolites was a colony of creatures vaguely resembling modern jellyfish. Graptolithina were abundant in the early Paleozoic, especially from the Ordovician to the Devonian. It was these creatures that formed the basis of zooplankton in the ancient seas, being passive filters that were carried by the current. Some Graptolites attached themselves to floating organisms. In the seas of the Silurian period, 420 million years ago, a powerful development of invertebrates continued. Particularly rapid and versatile development is observed in corals, trilobites, brachiopods, cephalopods, crinoids, and other groups of animals. The groups of horseshoe crabs and eryptorids have reached great development. Perigotus, due to its huge size, Perigotus was the most successful predator of its time. This Eurypterida had powerful claws with which it grabbed and held prey. 
such as trilobites or primitive fish. Flat fin-like hind limbs helped Perigotus to swim well. Perigotus fellow Eurypterus was much smaller, an average of 20 centimeters. But the largest individual discovered was more than one meter in size. Eurypteruses possessed spine-bearing appendages and a large oar, which they used for swimming. These animals were versatile species equally prone to predation or carrying. And this is a Eurypterid called Carcinosoma. Carcinosoma had walking appendages with spikes that were used to create a trap to capture prey. There was also a giant Stylonorus, reaching 3 meters in length. These Eurypterides led a predatory lifestyle, feeding on fish and various invertebrates. Stylonoruses had four pairs of legs. The limbs of the animal were long and powerful had spikes and were capable of locomotion to a lesser extent swimming. Astraspis is a primitive vertebrate of the Ordovician and Silurian periods. Such creatures lived 450-440 million years ago in the lagoons and shallow seas that washed North America. The front part of the body of Astraspis was covered with a strong shell consisting of dorsal and ventral shields. The rear half of the body was covered with strong scales and probably ended in a tail lobe. There were no other fins and astraspis did not swim well. In the early Silurian, a group of small fish, the so-called Echinthodes, arose, which became the first predatory fish on Earth. The name Echinthodes means prickly the fins of these fish were attached to hard spikes. Perhaps in order to make it more difficult for predators to swallow ancient fish. The Devonian period has begun. The fourth geological period of the Paleozoic era. During the Devonian period, creatures that did not have a backbone continued to develop in the same way as before, although the rate of development was not the same as in the Silurian. But a large number of fish with a heavy, high-mired head appeared. Armored fish, or as it are also called placoderms, are quite difficult to meet in our times, but then a large number of fish of this species lived on the sea plume, in lakes and rivers. The Devonian period was the time of the greatest cataclysms on our planet. Europe, North America and Greenland collided with each other forming a huge northern supercontinent Larisia. Wide swampy deltas formed, which created ideal conditions for animals that dared to take the first, so important steps from water to land. Devonian jawless fish agnates did not have real jaws and teeth. Skeletons of these fish were not bony, but cartilaginous, but most of them cover a bony shell. Astricoderms, similar to eels, swam freely in the water, filtering it or sucking in small organisms. Most of the astricoderms were small, but some species, clad in a thick shell, reached a length of 1.5. Only a few jawless fish have survived to this day. Lampreys and mixins, long eel-like fish. The creatures did not have any traces of a bone carapace, or even bone plates. These species were predators. Lampreys mainly parasitize other fish and had sheets to sheet the coats of marine animals that sink to the ocean floor. In the Devonian period, ferocious predators of Dunkleisty appeared up to three meters long. In the upper jaw of these giants, instead of teeth, there were rows of small plates. Constantly in contact with the lower jaw, these plates sharpened its edge so strongly that the fish could bite and crush the prey with both jaws. Massive armored heads of Dunkleists flexibly articulated with the body, and the monsters could open their mouths and tilt their heads back. Dunkleistia filled lakes, rivers and oceans, hunting for prey that was previously too tough for any predator.
The length of the entire body of adults ranged from 4 to 6 meters with a mass of at least 1 ton. At the same time, evolution gave rise to even more highly organized predators. These are sharks. Ancient sharks with wide fins and streamland bodies rapidly cut through the waters of the Devonian seas. The sharp teeth of sharks were constantly replaced by new rows growing behind the old ones. Shark relatives, rays, silently glided over the sea floor, hunting for unsuspecting fish and shellfish. Simultaneously with sharks, an even more promising group of fish, bonny fish, began to spread in the seas. Astixia. Most modern fish belong to this group. In these fish, in the process of growth, cartilaginous skeletons are replaced by bone ones. Astixia have two pairs of fins, pectoral and pelvic, which helps them move more easily. For example, these fish can bend, turn or break. One of the famous sharks of the Devonian period. This is Staticant. Outwardly, Staticant resembled a shark 70 centimeters long. The dorsal fin of this fish had a modified shape, resembling an ironing board. On the fin, as well as on the head, there were small spikes. At the end of the Devonian, many groups of fish became extinct, as did numerous families of corals, brachiopods, and ammonites. The places of extinct creatures were occupied by new species of animals that appeared already in the next Carboniferous period. You will see about the Carboniferous period and other interesting times of the Mesozoic era in the next issue. Thank you for watching this video to the end. Give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Don't forget to click on the bell to see new and interesting videos from the Real Unreal channel.